I'm Nina Zeta, Director of Partnerships at Sidewalker Daily, and today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite topics, press trips. So I work on the brand side. I have hosted press trips. I have sent people on press trips. Press trips, press trips, press trips. Press trips, press trips. Press trips. They are like literally all I've lived, eat, and breathed for the last year and a half. Um, so I feel like it's something that I can really share the brand side for you. Um, and I've also been on them as an influencer. Sidewalker Daily has a pretty good Instagram following and that has gotten me to go on press trips. So from someone who has hosted them and someone who has been on them, this video is gonna try to cover the ins and outs of everything you need to know on press trips. So let's start at the beginning. Good old definition. So a press trip is when a hotel or tourism board, for example, invites a member of the media to come to their destination or space or place, experience everything that place has to offer, and then go back and write about it. So press trips really started off for travel journalists. And now, luckily, it includes influencers. Um, but really, the, the, where press trips originated were for members of the media um, to go to, you know, to go learn and go home and write back. Now, what's a little bit different now is with influencers is that you guys have to go shoot everything while you're there, all your content. So that means even if it rains or if things are, you know, canceled, you have a specific amount of time because you have to capture everything while you're there. So there are differences. But luckily now, press trips are including influencers and they're even hosting their own group trips that are only influencers. Sometimes um, there are solo trips where you would go on a press trip by yourself that can also be called an individual media visit. And then sometimes there are group press trips where you'll be going with others. Now, there's something that's come up that I just wanted to quickly clarify. Um, I've seen a lot of blogger retreats uh, pop up everywhere and I think they look really awesome and exciting but those are not press trips the blogger retreats are trips that you actually have to pay for to go on if you're on a press trip you're treated as media and therefore everything should be covered for you flights uh, you know round trip airfare the accommodations the activities the food like you are their guest versus a blogger retreat where you pay to go. I just wanted to clear that up because someone asked a question about that before and they are different entities. So if you're an influencer, or travel blogger, um, a press trip, they're great for you guys because you're travel bloggers, you need to travel, you need to gain content, and they're really great ways for you guys to do that. Um, in my experience, they don't pay because like I said, back in the day, members of the media were brought on press trips to, um, and they were being paid for by, you know, getting their livelihood and getting paid a salary by the magazines or the newspapers that they wrote for. So as long as the hotel or tourism board covered all the expenses, it seemed to be a win-win. I'm sure there are cases where tourism boards, actually, I'm not sure I know there are cases where tourism boards and hotels pay influencers to come and visit, but what I'm talking about are usually um, all expenses covered, but they are not necessarily paid trips. So press trips, the thing about them is that they are invite only. So if you wanna go, you either have to get invited or you have to pitch yourself. How can you do that? Um, one of the ways I've noticed in my experience that press trips are organized is usually by a third party. It's usually a PR agency that's putting these together. So you're gonna wanna create a list of PR agencies that are focused in travel and ask them, you know, what's your press trip schedule looking like for this year? How can I be considered for a press trip? And these are questions that you should be asking also when you're networking in person. Um, getting on someone's press trip radar is a great way for a travel blogger to get content. So what to expect? Press trips are supposed to be a win-win for both, right? So it's not just about you guys getting what you need. You have certain expectations and deliverables that you need to meet for the client. And the best partnerships are always when both parties are winning. So technically what you should expect from them is flights, this is, okay, let me just back up. This is for international press trips. I'm talking if you are looking to go to another country and the tourism board is inviting you, that's this example. This isn't like um, a press trip where 
it's local or you're working with your local tourism board. So you can expect flights. You should expect accommodations. You should expect your meals and activities. Anything that's on the itinerary should be covered. Now, things that are not on the itinerary and things that are like tips and you know, paying someone a tip or laundry or extra drinks or food, if it's not on the itinerary, it's not covered. So you're gonna have to you know, budget for that. And then on your end, you're expected to deliver as well. Before you get on the trip, you and that person, me, will come up with the deliverables that we think fit best for you. I don't like to give everyone the same deliverables because why should someone who has a certain reach have the same deliverables as someone who doesn't? So I like to do it based on what I value your posts at. And just so you know, people on the brand side, we have formulas that we use to be like, okay, I think this post is worth this much. So she, the trip is gonna cost my client this much. So I want you to produce at least enough to break even with the cost of what it's gonna cost us to bring you. Um, but you will have certain deliverables. It can be anywhere from one to two or three photos a day, um, three being on the higher end. Uh, stories, blog posts, maybe a vlog, um, you know, the deliverables can change, uh, but you are, will be expected to create content while you are there. And as I have said, it is not a vacation, you will be working. And if you haven't been on a press trip, it's so much work. It is so, so much work, but it's worth it because you are networking, hopefully if you're on a group trip with others. Um, you're also meeting people that are at the hotel. You're meeting the PR people. You're building relationships, hopefully, so you can work with them again, whether with that spot or a different client that the PR agency has. So there's definitely a lot of benefits to going on them, but just know they are a lot of work. So because I'm on the brand side, I wanna share with you guys a little bit about our perspective on a successful press trip and also things that kind of drive us nuts. So put yourself in our shoes, okay? We are paying you um, to go on a trip to cover certain key messages that's gonna resonate well with your audience um, and post them and all that good stuff. But let's just say I'm a hotel and I bring you to, you know, I pay for you to come to my, our hotel and to cover us and then you know you sneak off property and go to a competitor hotel or you post things that you know maybe you're not supposed to be posting um that doesn't feel good now i understand the need of travel bloggers to always get content so if you had to go to if you're going to go off property make sure that you save that content for a later date don't post it while you're on your actual press trip it's just really unprofessional and you'll be blacklisted. I have blacklisted people who have done that to me before and I've straight up told them, if you leave the hotel to go to another one that's our competitor, you're not coming on my trips again. Um, it's kind of harsh, but it's just it's just not the right thing to do. So always consider you know ethics and moral compasses and try to be a good person at the end of the day because the client is investing a lot in you. So press trips, you're working, right? And at the end of a work day, you may want to have a, you know, a drink, relax, chill, but you're also at work. Um, so unless you're going to just go off and be, you know, separate from the group, which, um, which is fine if you do to go have some alone time, you're you're on you're you're on a working trip so i've been on group trips that are super fun and around 10 o'clock at night after dinner we're all like let's go to the bar let's have a few drinks and we're all young everyone's had a really fun time but that's when the cameras and stuff you know just don't post that portion remember you are there to work it doesn't mean you can't have fun no one's saying we don't want you to have fun because those are the memories you're going to leave with right but no profanity nudity excessive drinking you know storing body shots stuff like that it's not appropriate on a press trip if you're just traveling and that's the type of lifestyle you want to live by all means boo boo but if the hotel or tourism board is paying you to come to their place keep it professional, it's gonna get you a lot more work in the future. So what is expected of you? I know we talked about that a little bit in the beginning, but I wanted to tell you one of my favorite, I don't know, sayings, motto? What is it? It is under, under promise over deliver. Um, this 
is a favorite of mine. And this is for you guys. Um, I don't tell my clients <laughs> this as much, but if you under promise and you're like, listen, I'm gonna give you X, Y, Z, and you're able to push through, if you over deliver and come to them, you know, after the fact with your social media report or your recap, and you show them all the extra things that you've done to go above and beyond, it is a sure way to make you stand out and be invited on more press trips. Another thing that's expected of you besides, you know, being professional and representing their brand is to ensure that you are responsible for all your analytics, for print screening, anything that you need to do. It's not up to the PR person. It's not up to the hotel. It's not up to them to monitor your work. So if you know that I don't know, if you're taking photos, bring a backup drive. You know, if you need to come home with a certain amount of photos, if your battery has crashed in the past, bring a backup battery. I mean, I'm trying to think of all the things, but you guys need to do that. You need to make sure that you are able to deliver. So whether that means backing up your work, bringing extra equipment, um, really thinking about ways to make sure your work is delivered and also, be nimble. We've been on press trips that it has rained the whole time. And I was working with some influencers and they're like, let's go into one of the rooms. We're going to make a big bed and breakfast scene. Get me room service. Let's do this. And tell the PR person on the trip what you need to get the job done. I know you guys may be wondering about um, sponsor, you know, getting paid on press trips and i mentioned that you for the most part press trips aren't paid but i have seen in many cases um, influencers monetize their trips in two big ways so one is after the trip selling the content to the hotel to the tourism board being like here's what i gave to you and here's all the other stuff that i created and um upselling them on that way i find that that has worked a lot of times and if you're going to a press trip with that mindset then make sure you get content that isn't just about you so maybe photograph their hotel lobby in a different way maybe photograph the destination in a way that hasn't been done before and use that content to upsell later on so that you can monetize your trip. A second way I've seen influencers, travel bloggers monetize their trips is by bringing in brand sponsors. So we had a trip to um, an island and some of the girls brought other sponsors because they were doing sponsored posts. I think it was like a shoe company, but it doesn't hurt. Like they're shooting the shoes on the island and they're getting paid for those posts. So they're still monetizing their trip, they're just bringing brands with them. Now, client perspective. If you, and this is me, cause I'm like, okay, this is me. If you're gonna bring a sponsor, you know, on property, I am totally okay with it, but I need to know. I need you guys to tell us before, because we need to make sure it's approved and that it makes sense. I'll explain. If you're going to a country that is all about sustainability and eco-friendly, but then you're doing like a Red Bull or an energy drink or something that's like super synthetic and doesn't make sense with that country's like ethos, that's, that's not a good look. And the client's gonna be upset because again, they paid for you to get there. They're doing all this back end work to make sure you have the perfect trip. So if you have sponsors coming um, to do sponsored posts, A, ask and get approval and to post after your deliverables are already completed for the client. So if the country is asking you to post five photos and you took five more with five other sponsored posts that people are paying you, post these after. Um, don't mesh them in with the content that you're there to shoot. Super important for you guys to know. Okay, so the trip is over. You had a great press trip. What are some things that you can do? There's two. One, you're gonna be expected to send in all your content. Um, we did a video on social media reports that we will link below to. Um, this kind of tells you what a great recap looks like and what you should include, but obviously include all the posts that you were delivering, include links, um, include the engagement, the impressions, all the metrics that the brand doesn't have access to. So all like the business analytics, include those on your recap. Um, and then to stand out, be human, do an awesome thank you, whether it's a thank you card, a poster, not poster, hello, a postcard, um, something that is making you, you know, 
connect with that person who was hosting the trip or the person that helped you get it off the ground, send them just, you know, a quick thank you message and go a little bit above and beyond. I know people love emails. I like to do things a little fashion way if possible, um, cause I think it adds a special touch. Uh, Sidewalker Daily actually has a press trip program. I will also include that link below. That's where I play matchmaker and I put people looking to go on press trips with the clients that I have that are looking to host them. So if you're interested in signing up for that program, it's free. It's just like a matchmaking service. So yeah, I hope you guys learned everything you needed to learn about press trips. Um, and if you have questions, comments, all that good stuff, leave them below, like this video and subscribe. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.